sparked your interest in fashion? Um, growing up, being from Jamaica, Queens, um, we used to always go to the Kali block, me and my cousins. Um, our parents would give us money and we would just go buy whatever. Like, I remember, you know, you could go down and then once you're like in the mall, it's like you could buy fabric, you could get something sewn, you could buy sneakers, shoes, and it just, we just used to have so much fun. And we would literally buy anything and just dress up and have like not a care in the world. Um, and I remember when the nameplate belts came out, like I had to get the light up one so that way like I could change it. And then we had just moved to um, Atlanta and my belt said uh, Princess of the North. <laughs> and I would wear it in school and have it like just going around. I think I still actually have it at my house there, uh, which is pretty cool. But I feel like just being expressive and just having like an open mind to how things are and like you know being from New York it's like the melting pot we see so much culture um, different nationalities um, you know I grew up in a Jamaican household so it, my family is very cultural um, and we just always had fun and it just made me love being in clothes my mom would it's so crazy because Forever 21 is still out, but it came out years ago and I don't think a lot of people knew about it. But it was more like, it was harder to get at that time. And I remember my mom took me to Green Acres Mall and she's like, oh, get like whatever you want. And I'm buying shirts and everything. And it's just, everything was just so fun. And it just made me love being in clothes. Like I always wanted to dress up. Every weekend my mom is like, oh, I'm going to the mall. I'm like, yeah, we're going to the mall. <laughs> like, so I think that definitely um, gave me a spark of interest in fashion. Who would you say was the first big client you had shout you out or put you on? Um, my first big client that I actually helped in retail, I would say would be Roddy Rich. He came into LV. He had just um, pretty much, he I think he just dropped like a mixtape or an album. This was about three, about three years ago. And I helped him and it was just so cool. Like I was like, oh my God, I'm helping Roddy Rich. Like, and a lot of people didn't know about him at the time. And my coworkers was like, who is that? I'm like, y'all don't know who that is. Like, so that was probably like the first big client I helped in retail. Um, first client to shout me out was actually JT from City Girls. Thanks, girl. Um, yeah, she reached out to me for Amina Mawadi shoes and actually gifted them to her. I had just started um, my Instagram and I was really trying to get followers and stuff. And I was like, what can I do to like help my page grow? And then um, I was like, oh, can I gift you these shoes and you shout me out? And she got the shoes and she shouted me out on her stories and I was so hyped. Like I was like, oh my God, JT. And um, me and her just became like super cool just through that. Like I think it built the trust of like her, like sticking to her word and then me also sticking to my word. Um, with that, I think too, one time she posted like Cardi B's closet and um, it was a whole bunch of Birkins. And I was like in this Birkin phase, which is why I came out with this brand. Um, and I was like, oh, JT, like I could get Birkins too. Like if you need it, let me know. And she was like, oh, can I shout you out? And I was like, yeah. She was like, oh, hit up Style by Meech for Birkins. And then my Instagram was like, whoosh, like everyone's like, oh, I need a Birkin, I need a Birkin. And um, it that definitely helped my following grow. I got definitely a lot of other um, A-list celebrities from that too. Um, and then my page just kept growing overnight. Was being a stylist slash shopper what you thought you'd be doing when you first started out in retail? Um, no, because when I first started retail, I was going to school to pursue law. Um, so if you try to argue with me in a fashion debate, um, <laughs> but I was going to school um, for law and I was working retail. Fashion kind of always just was something that like stuck with me because like even in um, middle school I won best dress, high school I won best dress, and um, 
I feel like it just kind of followed me. So I started working retail. My first retail job was at Lord & Taylor in Manhasset. And from there, I started working at Saks All Fifth. Um, working in the company for a while, we used to get these crazy discounts. Like, I think at one point it was like 44% off Chanel um, and all these kind of things you hear that you're like, whoa, like I'm getting these like stuff for the low. Like, you know, what can I do? And I'm like, you know, being from New York, I just feel like we always have this hustling mentality. So I'm just like, I'm about to start selling this. Like, so I would buy like a whole bunch of designer stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a personal shopper. You guys could buy this. I got discounts for the low. Like, and everyone would hit me up like, oh, can you get me these? I need Louboutins. I need all these and then all these crazy brands. And then from there, I left. Saks went to Neiman's. The discount was even crazier. Like I remember one Christmas holiday, I probably bought like over 10 Chanel bags because they gave us like this insane deal. And I would just buy them and just flip them. Cause like that was the only way like it, I could really make money or profit from these companies. And it kind of just stuck like, oh yeah, if you need something, hit up meat, she'll get it. Or she got it for like a better deal or you know what I'm saying? So. It's like, I feel like I kind of manifested this life because it's like, I kind of gave myself a title that like, wasn't really a title. <laughs> and it just kind of like stuck with me. <laughs> Where do you see the future of Style by Meech, the brand going? Um, I see Style by Meech being more um, on a global side. I definitely want to be international. I want to start hiring people overseas, which is why I travel so much to build connections, um, meeting new people. Um, right now, I'm pretty cool in the Dubai shopping area. So I think that'll be like the next target that I have. Um, definitely want to tap into the France and um, UK market. Um, but I want to help people everywhere. Like I get so many DMs that people are like, oh, do you ship to Germany? Do you ship to South Africa? And it's like, I want to help everyone as much as I can because fashion is everywhere. And sometimes people aren't accessible to getting everything that they may want. And because I have so much access, I feel like I definitely want to take my brand to an international level. Who is an artist or artists you'd like to work with in the future? <laughs> What's an experience that taught you a valuable lesson about moving through the industry? Um, I would say privacy. Um, one incident that happened was um, reached out to me and he wanted a bag and the shade room like reposted the picture that I took with him and to everyone else, it made everyone so hyped because they were like, oh, I work, you worked with f you're like, that's the goal, you're officially the goal, that's so cool. But I feel like it took away like the confidentiality of like me and my client. Like, it's like, I wasn't too fond of it to be like, yeah, everyone wants to know. But inside it was like, I was so proud of myself that it's like, sometimes it's like, just think twice because it's like the future, like, it's so many other doors that probably could have opened up from that. And if I took two seconds to think and not care that like, I wanted to see people that wanted people to see that I worked with that it like, who knows what could have happened with that. Um, so I definitely would say be patient. Um, definitely, you know, keep clients um, to yourself. A lot of times I work with so many other people and it's like if they don't post me i won't post them like so it's so many other people that i work with that i won't even bring up because i care more about the relationship than money or and and most of my clients know that i really don't care about the money everything for me is always about the relationship and i always been like that even in retail my managers will say like you have a very commercial mindset like you know how to run a business once you have that relationship um the money is going to come naturally once people trust you the money is going to come naturally because once they have that trust they're automatically going to say you know what i could give style by meech fifty thousand, and i know she'll be up front and say hey i'm charging you this amount for whatever and then you know they'll get the product that they ask for um which is why people come to me i have clients that spend almost a hundred thousand a month shopping 
and they wouldn't do that if they didn't have trust or if we didn't build a solid relationship. So I would say that definitely is key to getting a through the industry. Like, don't care about the money. Care about your branding. Care about relationships. Your name. Like, just make sure all that is set. Because once you have that, it everything else will come naturally. What's some advice you would give to a younger your younger self or a younger upcoming stylist? My younger self, I think everything turned out how I would want it to be if I was to think back then, this is where I would be now. What I would say is don't be afraid to take risk um, to any other upcoming stylist. Um, if you feel like this is what you really want to do, go for it. Like, don't let anyone tell you like, oh, there's not a career behind it or anything like that. Um, you know, definitely take that chance, take that risk, especially if you're young. It, it now's the time to like do anything you feel like you want to do or, you know, you, you love is like, do it now because 10 years from now, the worst thing that you can ever really have in life to me is regret. Don't regret like, oh, two years ago, I wish, I wish, I wish. No, just do it. I was like that for probably a year. And maybe if I didn't wait, who knows where I would be now? Probably even, I would probably be international by now. But, um, you know, everyone does have fear. And I would say that for the most part, just take risks, go for it. Don't, the only person that could hold you back in life is you. And don't hold yourself back. What milestones are you working to achieve? I would say helping other personal shoppers. Actually, no. Helping, a milestone I would want to achieve is to help other upcoming personal shoppers build a brand. Like, I want to become a millionaire and then teach other people how to become a millionaire. That's a goal that I have for myself. So how did you get here? Um, so I got here. Um, I used to work for the Webster um, and I left on a really good note. Um, I have a really good relationship with the company. Um, so one day I randomly posted like, I should do a pop up. Like people ask all the time, like, oh, do you only work with celebrities? How can we shop with you? Like, I want to meet you. You inspire me. So I'm like, what can I do that would be super cool that I could start meeting everyone that's in my DM. So I'm like, maybe I could do like a pop up where, you know, I work with brands and then I'll try to get like a couple exclusive things to have. And um, I posted and I asked, um, cause I'm from New York, but I'm based in LA. So I asked my followers where would, if I did a pop up, where would they want it to be? And everyone voted New York. So when I posted, I was like, all right, the guys, everyone voted for New York. And then um, the retail director of the Webster reached out and was like, oh, we have a gorgeous space in New York. We would love to do an event with you. And I was like, okay. And I was like, oh, that's actually so cool. Like, you know, like I, I thought like I would have to rent a space, decorate, but the space here was beautiful. And um, I just was like, okay, I'll go for it. And we posted, they made the flyer and here I am. So how was day one? Day one was amazing. Woo! Um, I think we did probably close to like 25 to 35,000 in sales. Um, me and Ricky here at the Webster Soho. Um, the staff here was super amazing. It was so fun. Um, I had a lot of custom um, items um, that uh, Canvas Bling made. Thank you so much. Um, it had chips, sour patches, we had glasses, um, or champagne flutes, rather. Um, and I even did like a custom coloring book, which was really cool. It had all kinds of brands, Louis Vuitton, Hermes, Amiri, um, and I just wanted to do something super fun. Um, so day one was super successful. A lot of people came out, a lot of people showed support, um, friends, family. Um, my clients, um, some of my clients even booked tickets to get here. So I was like super proud of myself for that because I feel like that wouldn't just happen to anyone or like if I really wasn't doing 
what I'm supposed to do or like oh stop by me just the goat like I feel like I really wouldn't be the goat it's like oh people are booking tickets to come to my event so it just kind of makes me wonder like how far I could really go with this like maybe I'll do a stop by me tour Brick, brick, pam, brick, brick, pam, brick, pam, brick, brick, pam, brick, brick, pam, brick, pam, brick. When me I use me chopper phone, no chatting a lot, no ramp with me mother food, Spanish town, foreign account.